we will work on two examples where our goal is to find a simpler expression. The second example is a little bit more difficult than the first. We're given this expression overall as a disjunction. We want to find something simpler in propositional logic, and we have all these various rules of equivalency. So the first thing to do is to look for overlap. We have a Q, we have a not Q, so perhaps we can get those together and engage in the negation law or the identity law, something like that. But also note that there's an overlap. We have this P and, this P and. So there's a sense in which we can, so to speak, factor that out. Okay, because distribution holds in propositional logic. So remember, so or note, that if we have something like P or parentheses Q and R, that's logically equivalent to P or Q and P or R. So note, P or, P or, P or. So let's apply that. So this is line one. So for line two, we can factor out that P and, so to speak. So P and parentheses Q or not Q by distribution. Great. We have this Q or not Q. So that's necessarily true, right? And that is the negation law. So the negation law. So for line three, we can say P and something that's always true. So negation. And now we have P and something necessarily true. We have the identity law, right? So notice this right here. So for line four, we can just get P by identity. And there we have simplified this expression to something much simpler. And let's do one more example. So here is example two. We have this conjunction. So the idea is to, so to speak, simplify it or get something more concise, shorter. Now, when it comes to this, when we have a negation over some parenthetical statement, um, if it's a conjunction or a disjunction, right away, D. Morgan just jumps out. So we should apply D. Morgan. So this is line one. And then for line two, we can get A and, so we're applying D. Morgan here, parentheses, not B, and not parentheses, A, and not C, close parentheses, close parentheses, D. Morgan. And then we can apply D. Morgan again because we have a negation of a pair of conjuncts. So for line three, we can get A and parentheses, not B, and parentheses, not A, or not, not C, close parentheses, close parentheses, D. Morgan once again, double negatives. So for line four, we can get A and parentheses, not B, and parentheses, not A, or C, close parentheses, close parentheses, double negation. All right. So what about line five? What should we do here? Is there any commonality here, some overlap? Well, yeah, we have this A. We have this not A. So I think we're going to want to put those together somehow. Um, so to do that, I think we should first off, because we're going to be applying the commutative rule and the associative rule. So let's move, so to speak, this A over to this right-hand side of this um, conjunction. So let's do that. So we can say parentheses not B and parentheses not A or C, close parentheses, close parentheses, and A, commutative rule. Okay, so conjunction, conjunction, we can move around these parentheses to do a regrouping. So we really want to group these things together because we want that A and not A to be together. And we can get this not B, so to speak, by itself. So we can say not B and um, parentheses, parentheses, not A or C, close parentheses, and A, close parentheses, associative rule. All right. Now what? Well, we want this not A near this A, so let's just uh, flip that. So let's get this um, 
a over here. So for 7, not b, and parentheses, a and parentheses, not a, or c, close parentheses, close parentheses, commutative rule. Next, let's distribute this out. We have this a and such and such here. So for 8, say not b and parentheses, because then we're going to get that a and not a. So that's really what we want. So a and not a, that's in parentheses, or a um, and, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's right, a and c. Yeah, that's good. And that's the distribution law. And now we have this a and not a. So we have the negation law. That's necessarily false. That's a contradiction. So for line 9, we get not b and something that's always false, contradiction, or a and c, negation law, because that is, let's see, it's right over here. All right, 10. So we have the identity law, because if you have false or such and such, it's going to be ultimately equivalent to that expression. So we can say not b and parentheses a and c, close parentheses, identity. And that's pretty much all we can do. Um, and let's look at that identity law really quick to make sure. So we have this right there. And by the association law, we could remove those parentheses. It's not a, there's no ambiguity there. So we could just say 11, not B, and A, and C, and so on and so forth. We can go A, and not B, and C. But if you want it in alphabetical order, but there's really no reason, kind of stupid to do that. So. Line 10 is good, so that simplifies that.